Hello, 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 hello. So this is our cooking demonstration. And today we have an amazing Tammy Kramer with us. And I am so excited because I love her salads. And I tell her multiple times on Facebook that when she puts those salads, the pictures of those salads uh, on Facebook, I really want to print it out and put it on the wall because it's so beautiful. And I just love her and she is uh, plant-based and she's sofas free everything I love and everything I believe in. And let's welcome Tommy. P could you please tell uh, a bit what you do, who you are? Sure, of course. So I'm the creator of the blog and the YouTube channel called Nutmeg Notebook, where I teach people all about whole food, plant-based eating. In fact, the whole lifestyle. I used to be a yo-yo dieter and for like nearly four decades. And it was after I found whole food plant-based and went sofas free, which is really an important key component for me. I was able to stop yo-yo dieting. So I used to be a size 16 and now I'm a size four. And I've been maintaining that for the past five years. It'll be six years come February. And so I just decided that I have to share all about this lifestyle because to me, it was like I'd found like a magic pill when I found whole food plant-based sofas free, because I was always able to lose the weight, but I could never maintain it long-term. And that was so frustrating for me, but I was buying into the myth that I could eat everything in moderation. And now I know the truth is there's certain foods that I cannot eat in moderation. And if I follow the principles of calorie density, I'm able to eat a large amount of healthy food that's not only health promoting, but it also helps me sustain my weight loss. So I eat the same way today that I ate to lose the weight. And that's also something that I've learned that is very important is that you have to be consistent. So when I first went plant-based back in 2013, I originally read um, Dr. Furman's book, Eat to Live. And one of the principles that he teaches is to make a salad as your main dish for one meal a day. So I started doing that seven years ago, and I am still doing that. And I do think that that has a really big um, factor in my ability to have lost the weight because I'm also hypothyroid, which gives me a sluggish metabolism, which before plant-based, you know, it made it really difficult to lose weight. And I also think it's one of the principles that helps me to maintain my weight loss. So back when I first started, I was just making a big, beautiful salad. My husband joined me in having that for one meal a day as well. And now I do them as a chopped salad, which is something that I learned about from watching Chef AJ, who is also a friend and a mentor of mine. I learned about chopped salads from her. Originally, I was doing it in a um, plastic bowl, and I have graduated now to using these beautiful wood bowls that are made in Holland, Michigan. And I love chopped salads. I loved my big, beautiful salads, but the chopped salads that I'm going to show you today, the reason I like those even more is one, I can have a big volume of greens and other vegetables and reduce the size of it by chopping it. Also, when you chop the salad, every bite is incredibly tasty because all of the flavors meld through the whole salad. So you're not getting one bite with tomato in it and another bite with onion. Those flavors are mixed throughout the salad. Also, it creates more moisture. And the plus for that is then we need less salad dressing. And I like to use, I've graduated to just liking vinegars, the flavored vinegars, instead of using salad dressing. But if you like salad dressing, I have beautiful salad dressing recipes on my blog as well. So what I also have discovered is that I need to batch prep food, including my salads, believe it or not. So every weekend, I prepare a dozen of these salads and put them in my refrigerator for my husband and I. And that way we each have one salad a day until I go shopping and buy more salad ingredients. And I do have a blog post on my blog and a YouTube video showing you how to do it. But this is a salad that I made last 
Saturday, believe it or not, and look at how beautiful it is. It is not wilty. The only thing that will happen is like the romaine lettuce will have a little bit of oxidation on it. I don't know if you can see that, just on the cut edges. And that's no different than what an apple does. Once you cut an apple and air gets to it and it'll oxidize, but that it is not spoiled. It just has a little bit of oxidation. And once you chop it, you know, you can't even see that. Then that completely disappears. And just having the salads pre-prepped in the refrigerator makes sure that we both eat a salad every day because it's already together. Before I started batch prepping them, I would pull all of the ingredients out every day to make the salads. And I thought, you know what? This is not sustainable. I can't keep doing this for the rest of my life. There has to be an easier way. So I do have a video about batch prepping where I give you all the tips on how you can batch prep the salads so that they will last. Um, and then the other thing is because the salads are in there, we go, well, we don't want that to go to waste. I've already gone to all the time to make them and prep them and bought all the ingredients for them. And so we eat those instead of eating out. And so it saves money, it saves time because in an hour's time, I can make 12 salads. And if I was pulling all of those ingredients out to make salads every day, I'd be spending at least 30 minutes a day making those salads. So I believe in working smarter, not harder. Um, I love this lifestyle, but I don't wanna spend all of my time in the kitchen prepping food. So what I did before we started is I did take one of those salads and I started to pre-chop it a little bit because I didn't want you to have to watch me chop the whole thing. It only takes three minutes though to chop this salad by hand. And there's other ways you can do it. You don't have to have a Holland wood bowl in order to chop the salads. You can um, chop them on a large cutting board using a large knife. Some people who have trouble with their wrists or their hands or have weak arms, they will chop the salad in a food processor. And you, if you do that, you just wanna do a small amount at a time and you wanna use the pulse and then dump it out, put more in. Otherwise you're gonna end up with a green smoothie. And so you just wanna be careful with that. And OXO is a brand of kitchen supplies and they do make a salad chopping bowl um, and it's sold like at Bed Bath & Beyond or at Amazon. And you can use that as well. So yesterday we happened to interview the um, store owner of the Holland Bowl Company, and it's a family owned business in Holland, Michigan. And so I sent Valeria the link to that if you want to know more about the bowls. And if you use our affiliate link, if you um, have a minimum $125 order, which is what this bowl costs, then they will give you a free mezzaluna knife for chopping the salad with, which is awesome. So I just want to show you, I have one of those salads in here, and this is, I used to make them about a pound, but I'm, I guess my appetite's changing as I get older and I can't quite eat a whole pound. So I'm making the salads about 13 ounces. The only reason I weigh them is just to make every salad consistent, because when we're following a whole food plant-based diet, we really don't have to worry about calories or the amount of food we're eating, as long as we're paying attention to our hunger sig signals and we're only eating until we're comfortably full. And that's the key, comfortably full, not overly full like we used to do on Thanksgiving. Now, I also have some fresh basil in here. And I find that if you add fresh herbs to your salads or your chopped salads, you also get a huge burst of flavor. And then you need less salad dressing or less vinegar. And all you do is you take the mezzaluna knife and you just chop in the bowl and chop everything up. Now, I like my salads to be chopped fairly fine, but some people don't. And I just kind of move the greens around so that I can get them all chopped up. And I do have little tomatoes in here too. And the trick to that, to doing the tomatoes and not having them squirt all over you is to cut them in half before you start chopping. And that way the juices will come out. They'll blend with all the greens and the other vegetables that you have. And you can see I have beautiful red cabbage in here. I have broccoli slaw and I have red onion as well. 
and it just uh, spinach and baby kale and a little bit of romaine. That just happens to be the combination of flavors that I enjoy, but you can choose whatever flavors you like the best and whatever greens are your favorite. So if I had started from the beginning with you and we timed it, it would have been about three minutes to do this, which isn't too long, right? So now I'm gonna show you how to make Japanese sweet potato croutons. Now I like to make them in my air fryer. If you don't have an air fryer, don't, don't be distressed because you can actually do it under a broiler. So when I go visit my parents who live in Nebraska, I make this salad for them and they don't have an air fryer. So I just use the broiler on my mom's oven and it works beautifully. So, and this is what they look like, but I'm gonna show you how we can make these. So oh, I have beautiful. Two, yeah, I have two kinds on here. So these are just plain Japanese sweet potatoes. And these I'm gonna show you how I kind of bump it up just a little bit and make them even tastier. And I do that when I have enough time, but if I'm in a hurry, um, the plain Jane ones are equally as delicious, just a little bit different. So I'm just gonna move that salad out of the way and bring in my little cutting board here. So this is just a Japanese sweet potato. Um, I love these, they can also be called Murasaki sweet potatoes. I'm able to find these at Whole Foods. Trader Joe's sells the Murasaki ones. Um, I guess in some places they're called Jersey sweet potatoes. Just depends on the area that you live in, what they might be called. And so they're red on the outside. I've already cut it in half. And then you can see it's creamy on the inside. And so these are a sturdier sweet potato than a yam, like a um, a garnet yam is. They're just a little more sturdy, but they're very, very sweet. So I have a video all about how to bake them, but I like to bake them at 400 degrees for about an hour and 20 minutes for this size. And this one probably weighs about eight ounces, I'm guessing. If they're bigger than that, I'll bake them for even longer because you need to bake them long enough that all of the sweet juices come out and kind of caramelize and then they're so amazing. And I batch prep these as well. Put them in the refrigerator. I stand them up in containers like this so that they don't get crushed by weight of the other potatoes and I do not put a lid on it. And that just helps them stay um, really nice so that the skin stays firm so that they don't get mushy. And then once they've been refrigerated and you reheat them, something incredibly magical happens on that reheat and they become even sweeter and more delicious. So this is another reason to batch cook. So I just cut it in half and then I cut it into slices and I make them about a quarter of an inch thick. That seems to work the best for me anyway, but you know, it's up to you. And yes, I do leave the skin on. I love the skin especially after it's been put in the air fryer or broiled because it gets crispy and it's so delicious. So I would just continue to do that with the entire potato. And then if, I, if I'm just gonna make my quick version, then I'll just take them just like this and I put them on my air frying rack like so and just line them up. And then I do them about 400 degrees for about 20 minutes for the ones that are just the plain Jane ones. Now, if I'm dressing it up a bit, this is everything bagel seasoning. I get this at Sprouts and this happens to have no added salt. That's what you wanna look for. And this brand is Spice Hunter brand and they also have it available on Amazon. And I have an Amazon shop store. Do you have an Amazon shop store, Valeria? Not yet, but I'm working on mine. Okay. So um, you can also get it. There's several different brands of no salt added that are on uh, Amazon as well. And so it's just super delicious. It's sesame seeds, garlic, um, black sesame seeds, garlic and black sesame seeds, toasted onion and poppy seeds. So it has a tremendous amount of flavor. It has about um, 20 calories for a teaspoon and we're not using all that much. So what I do is I pour it into a plate and then I just take 
my slices and I only do one side. It's overpowering if you do both sides, but I just pat it down and then look, it's covered. And then I just put that on my air frying sheet and I air fry these at 400 degrees, but only for about 12 um, minutes or so. It just depends. It depends on how moist the potato is. And then um, you just want it to brown, but you don't want it to burn. So you just want to watch them. And the same if you put it under the broiler, you just want to watch it. Don't burn it. Keep an eye on them. And you know they can go from lightly brown to black in a hurry. So you just want to keep a good eye on it. So I'm going to pass this off to my cameraman here just to get it out of the way. Thank you, do you put do you put the seeds only on one side of the potato? Yes, I only do one side. I for me it's just a little too overpowering if you do it on both sides. I just it makes it the flavor is just too intense for me. But personal personal choice. Okay, so this is one of my favorite salads especially for this time of year. So here's what else is going to go in it. So this is um, chopped apple. This happens to be a pink lady. It's one of my favorite apples because they're really nice and sweet and a good crunch to them. And of course, you know, I chopped this probably about an hour and a half ago to prep for the show. And so I did put it in some water with a little bit of lemon juice just to keep it from turning brown. But if I was just making it and going to eat it right away, I wouldn't do that. It's just an extra step. Now, I will tell you, this is an amazing salad to make if, for your family or if you um, are having company over, if you have some people in your bubble that you do have over during the pandemic, everybody loves this salad. I was visiting my parents last October and I made this salad for them every day. And my, my mom said, oh, I can never get dad to eat salads. He won't eat them. Well, of course, he was being sweet, nice. And so he ate my salad. And then he asked for seconds. And so um, I made it every day that I was there. And after I left, she continued to make this salad for them um, for months because he would eat it. So time for them to start making it again. Now, this is mandarin oranges, those cute little, the cuties they're called, that are really easy to peel. And we're very lucky here in Northern California. We live very close to the um, foothills where they grow these because they have warm days and cool nights and it makes for very sweet mandarin oranges. Usually they have a festival uh, in October for it, but of course this year they won't be doing that. So then I have the apples and I have the mandarins in here. If you want to bump up um, the salad a little bit, you can add some beans if you want. And garbanzo beans are really delicious in this. I just find if I put those in, then the salad's too filling for me. But let me say that you do need to have starch with your salads because the vegetables, non-starchy vegetables, are only about 100 calories per pound, and it will not sustain you for very long if you don't add some starch to it. So starch is our secret weapon for losing weight, for being healthy, and for not getting hungry in between meals. And then you can just add the croutons. And so if I'm making this, um, you know, pretty, then I would just alternate my little croutons like this. And this is what uh, Valeria is talking about. The pictures that I post on Instagram are really pretty like this. Well, that one fell apart. It fell into two pieces. Sometimes that happens. So this, that's what that looks like. Isn't that beautiful? You know, if we make our food pretty, we, they say that we eat with our eyes to begin with, right? And so we want that food to be as pretty as it can be so that we will start thinking how delicious this is going to be before we even start eating it. Now I have some pomegranate seeds. And this time of year, you can find them um, in the stores. Trader Joe's didn't have any whole ones, but they did have containers of the, the seeds itself. Oh, Tom wants me to hold it up closer. Um, so this is from Trader Joe's yesterday. And they add a different texture to the salad because they have a seed, a little nutty, um, like crunchy seed to them. 
And not only that, but they add a little bit of beauty. See how gorgeous that is? So pretty. And I just love, I, when you bite into them, then that little bit of juice comes out and it's so delicious. So for this particular salad, I just like to have a little bit of flavored vinegar for it. And so um, where my mom and dad live, they do have a Whole Foods. And so I bought this one, which is the Napa Valley Naturals Grand Reserve. Now, the thing about this one is it's only 4% acidity and most vinegars are 6%. And a lot of people don't like vinegar because of that acid, because it's too uh, astringent for them. But this one is a thick and syrupy vinegar and it's very sweet. And so you really only need about one to two tablespoons for this entire salad. And a lot of health food stores also carry this. Um, the health food stores in our community carry this. And I believe too, you can get it also on Amazon. So this one goes really well with this salad. It doesn't overpower it. And then California Balsamic is um, a company, oops, I gotta get this turned for the tag. Okay, gotta figure it out. It's always backwards on camera. Um, and then this company, California Balsamic, is a company that's um, local to Northern California, and they have amazing balsamic vinegars. So the ruby red onion, I love. It's not real strong, it's very subtle. And then the Simply Lemon is one of my favorite. And I actually like these two together. And I do that a lot with my salads. I'll blend two. And so I would just do like two teaspoons of the lemon and two teaspoons of the ruby red onion and put that on the salad. And then, um, and oh, one more thing I've got to grab that I didn't pull out of my cupboard. This is so good, you guys. This is, this is black cumin seed. And I learned about this from Dr. Greger's How Not to Diet book. And he talks about in there how in the studies that they have done in, um, with two control groups, excuse me, how well this works to help people reduce their LDL cholesterol as well as reduce their weight, believe it or not even if they didn't change anything about the people's diet, a quarter teaspoon of this a day made a big um, impact on there. Oh, thank you, Tom. For some reason, I'm choking. I think it's just, uh, I love caraway seeds and I add it in my waffles or anything that kind of heats it up a little bit and gives this aroma. And it comes from my childhood because uh -huh. uh, one of the breads that we really, really love, it was like a brick of very tough, like dark bread with a layer of those caraway seeds. Oh. It was, yeah, it just, it comes from my childhood and every, like I always use it, but I never seen it's, um, I've never seen it like doing the um, whatever it's, you know, it's doing right now. Like it's, it's yeah. crazy. Like it's black. You know what I mean? So I guess. It's yeah. So these are called Nigella Sativa. If you can see that there. Is it focused? Yeah. On? Okay. And they're also called black cumin seeds. Now they don't taste like cumin. They taste more like black pepper. But in the studies that they did, it needed to be ground and they were using a powder. So we bought um, a spice grinder on Amazon and these, and they're in our Amazon store. So if you go to amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash nutmeg notebook, they're there. And so what I do is I just grind them up and this is battery operated. It couldn't get any easier. And then I just put them on everything. I put it on my soup. I put it on my vegetables. I put it in my salads. And I absolutely love it. And I have issues with my LDL cholesterol. My body's just a little cholesterol making machine. Even though I follow a wonderful, very healthy uh, whole food plant-based diet, when I have a lot of stress or chronic pain, then my body produces extra cholesterol. And so I'm really happy to know that I can do something simple 
like this because um, Dr. Greger says it costs us less than five cents a day to do this. And he's like, why don't we hear more about this? And he's like, because the pharmaceutical companies can't make any money off of this. So, um, so it just adds a really nice flavor. And then it's doing so much good for my body as well. So this is um, the fall salad with the crispy Japanese sweet potato croutons. And uh, I sent Valeria the link. I have a link to making this on my uh, website. And I also have embedded in that link is a YouTube video just to remind you on how to do it um, in case you forget or you need some extra little pointers. And this will be my lunch because this is absolutely delicious. In fact, a couple weeks ago, you know, it's been really hot in California. And a couple of weeks ago, the temperature dropped just a little bit, like 10 degrees. And I, it felt like fall, but it was like 92 degrees. But that compared to 105 felt really like fall, right? And I thought, oh, it's time to start making that salad. So I went to the store to see what apples were out and if the mandarins were um, back in stock. And so I've been making this for the last couple of weeks. It's so good. So, but next, I'm going to show you another of my favorites. And um, I'm going to set it over here, Tom, because I want, I'm going to want to show it again at the end, I think. Another one of my favorites is a um, Mexican chopped salad. So if you guys follow me at all um, on Instagram or Facebook, I post once a week, I'll post what I've batch cooked for the week. And then at, at least five days out of the week, I will post what I ate in a day so that you can see how I put that food to good use and how I make meals out of it for the week. And you'll see that I eat a lot of Mexican food because it's just, it's one of my favorites. I love Mexican food and I love um, Indian food, but I've been on a real kick for Mexican food lately and I've just been eating a lot of it. So I have another chopped salad here and I did go ahead and chop it. And this one is actually going to get topped with crispy, no oil, little tortilla strips. And I'm going to show you how you can do that. So I just make them myself. And again, I use the air fryer. But if you don't have the air fryer, you can use your oven. Um, how long it takes is going to vary depending on your oven. And it's also going to vary depending on how thick your corn tortillas are. But I'm going to show you the brand that I like and that we can get locally. This is the Mia Rancho brand. And they also sell these at Costco, but they sell the full size um, tortillas. These are the little sliders. And I can get these like at Safeway, uh, at Nugget Market, um, where else? Uh, Whole Foods also has them. And so this is a brand that I like. And they also have these at the grocery stores. And these are a thin one. And these work really great for the crispy tortilla strips. And so what I do is I just take, and the ones that you get at Costco are thicker. And I'm told by my, um, the people that follow my blog that not everybody can find them where they live. So some things that are sold at Costco are regional items. So I take these little slider ones, and you can see, aren't they cute? And I cut them in half. And then I take those halves and I just cut them into little strips. And these are like between an eighth and a quarter of an inch wide. And you just need a nice sharp knife for this. And Tom actually sharpened my knives for me. Was that this morning or yesterday? It's all running together for me. <laughs> but it's actually much easier and safer to have sharp knives than it is to have dull knives. You guys, you can cut yourself and hurt yourself with a dull knife. And then I just take these and I lay them out on my um, little trays for my air fryer. And if you don't have an air fryer, then line a baking sheet either with parchment paper or a silpat mat because we don't want them to stick. Oh, and I forgot to mention that these do not have any um, salt added or oil. These are salt and oil free. They have a little trace of lime juice in them and they're made with yellow corn masa flour. 
and whole white corn flour and a little bit of gargum. And the gargum just helps to um, make them stick together. It gives them some body. And then I put these in my air fryer at 375 degrees and it only takes about four minutes for these to crisp up. But you need to watch them close. And it depends on which ones you use. If you use a thicker tortilla, it can take a little bit longer. And if you use these um, bigger thin ones, it can take less time. And so, uh, and trust me, a number of times I have burned them. I even like them even if they're burnt. But, but this gives a nice different texture to the salads. And that's why I like to take the chopped salad and add different ingredients to it because I like the mixture of different textures, something crunchy, you know, um, and it just adds a lot. And so then I just let these cool. And once they're cool, then I take and put them on my salad after I get my salad all assembled. So again, I just take one of the batch prepped salads. Now these are 15 inch bowls. This is a cherry bowl and I just love the color of it. And then you can add whatever you want, whatever your favorite ingredients are for a Mexican salad. So here's what I have today. These are black beans that I made from dried beans and I made them in the um, pressure cooker. And I gave Valeria a link to the Mexican chopped salad with the tortilla strips. And so I have instructions on there how to make them. And they're seasoned with cumin and onion and garlic. And oh, they're really super delicious. So um, I always think I'm gonna end up making them into some refried beans, but we love them so much. We just eat them up just like they are. So my combination that I like is to do some black beans and I'm just gonna put them in here. Oh, and I should tell you when I chopped this salad, I um, added some fresh cilantro to it when I chopped it, and that just helps give it a really fresh, delicious burst of flavor. And I love cilantro, and I know some people don't, but if you like cilantro, chop it up, because when you chop it up, it just intensifies the flavor. And then this is oat growth. It looks like brown rice, but it's actually oat growth. And I make oat groats in the pressure cooker so that they turn out like brown rice. And then I use them in a savory way in place of brown rice in recipes. And why do I do that? I do that because oats help reduce LDL cholesterol. They latch onto it in your body and they help move it on out. And so just by substituting this for rice is a great added measure to help keep my LDL cholesterol down. They have a little bit of chew to them, just like short grain brown rice does. And they have a, just a slight oaty flavor to them. And they happen to be what all of our other oat products are made from, from the oat groat. So steel cut oats is the oat groat, but chopped up a little bit. The um, quick cooking steel cut oats are the steel cut oats. Okay. So we'll just pick up where we were. So the, um, the oat groats uh, are so chewy and delicious. And these are the healthiest version of the oats that you can use. So my friend Sharon McRae taught me how to make them in the Instant Pot so that I would like them. The first time I made them, they came out like porridge and I thought they were disgusting. Um, but I had a great big bag of them. And so um, she taught me how to make them so that I would like them. And so I add these also to my salad uh, because they take the place of the brown rice and they just, they taste delicious. And I use them like in the bottom of my bowl when I'm having soup, I'll add them to that. And then this is just some frozen corn that I've thawed out. And I'm going to put that here as well. And you can see how pretty this is. It's just oh, all of my favorite things in one place. It's awesome. So I have those going here and then I can add a little bit of salsa and I have a delicious recipe for making your own salsa in the blender and no salt, no sugar added. I think that's probably plenty of that. And then this is one of the key ingredients and this is my chipotle nacho cheese sauce. 
and I just made a big batch of this this morning and I make it in my blender. So I have a Vitamix blender and believe it or not, the base is potatoes and carrots and it has oats in it and a little bit of nutritional yeast and then the seasonings like chipotle and smoked paprika and cumin and garlic and onion powder. And so I sent Valeria the link to the recipe for the Mexican chopped salad. So you'll get the recipe there for the beans as well as the chipotle nacho cheese sauce. So I like it either cold like this or if I'm, if I'm not demoing it, I will heat all of these ingredients up in the microwave so they're hot. You know how you can order a taco salad in a restaurant and all the toppings come hot. And then I will heat up the chipotle nacho cheese sauce as well. And then I just pour this over the top. Look at how thick and creamy this is. So one thing about when you make this cheese sauce, because it does have a base of potatoes and carrots, once it sets in the refrigerator, it does get thick. It gets so thick you can almost slice it. And so what we do is we take a serving of it and put it in a small bowl and we add just a little bit of plant milk, unsweetened plant milk, and then we stir it really good with either a little uh, whisk or even a fork works good for that. And we gently heat it up in the microwave and then whisk it again. And it's perfectly creamy like this once again. So I am a big cilantro lover. So I take and garnish this with quite a bit of cilantro. Oh, also, I was going to tell you that um, lime juice also tastes really good with this. And I should have squirted the salad with the lime juice before I started, but I got busy chatting and forgot. But that's what I normally do is I'll put lime juice in the salad. And if you want, you can also add a little bit of ground cumin to it. But I have enough flavors going on between the seasoned beans, the chipotle sauce, and the salsa that I have in here that I didn't need to do that. And then I like the added um, flavor of some chopped tomatoes. And I was able to get some organic, pretty little tomatoes yesterday. My tomato vines are all done producing. And so I've had the last of tomatoes from my backyard. But I do like the little burst of flavor that little tomatoes add to it. And then some green onions, some chopped green onions. And when you guys, when you're chopping your green onions, make sure that you chop the greens the green part of it too, not just the white, but the green part has a lot of flavor and it's lovely in your Mexican dishes. And so this is just so pretty and it tastes so good. And then here's the infamous crunchy little tortilla strips without any oil. And then I just like to add those around the edge of it. And this is so fun because you get all that crunch and you have all the flavors of a delicious Mexican meal, but in the form of a salad. And so this is just like super healthy and super flavorful and so satisfying because it gives me what I want when I want that, I have that urge for some Mexican food. And everybody loves this. Now, people always say, well, how many servings is that? Okay, here, I have to confess, I eat the whole thing myself. The entire salad I will eat. I do not share this. Now, you could, but if I had to share it, then it would become a side salad and not be the main dish. And let me tell you, every single bite of this is amazing. And that's why I've been making it so much, because it's so delicious. And it's beautiful, too. So... That's my trick on the salad. Oh, I also wanted to show you California balsamic. If you like heat, this blazing habanero is absolutely delicious. It is really hot and spicy. As you can see in the bottle, these are all the seeds from the habanero. But if you like a more mild flavor, they do have one that is called Sweet Heat. And um, Thomas, the owner of the company, he created that one because he doesn't like spicy. He doesn't like hot. 
And so he created that one. And everybody can enjoy that one. Even our little four-year-old granddaughter likes the taste of that one. It has just a slight little bit hint of some spice to it, but then the sweetness really comes through. And so you can go to California Balsamic and order vinegars. I don't have any affiliation with them. I just really love the company and Thomas and his wife um, create the most amazing flavored vinegars. So that these are my two of my favorite salads, you guys. And if I could only have two things to eat, I would be happy to alternate these from meal to meal and be quite satisfied with them. So do you have any questions, Valeria? I just want, I, I was waiting for, for you to be done because I don't wanna talk over because I know that the screen turns to me. I was like, yes. look at those salads. I was like, nope, 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 nope. You're not saying anything because the, the picture is gonna change. I just, I, I absolutely love those salads. And you know, I think that um, for, for me, for sure, I would get one salad and I would eat it and eat it and eat it. And then after that, I would stop and I would eat just the vegetables. But to have like to look at how many different salads you can make and how you can dress it. It just it's amazing. You can have uh, every, like different salad every day of the week. And it just and you make it just make it so easy to actually make it. Um, and you're so right that we enjoy our food and we want to eat our food first with our eyes. It's so very important for uh, visual people and especially for people who want to incorporate their family, like they want their family to eat, um, eat healthy. Like if you'll put this salad, if I'll, you'll put my salad in front of them, they will be like, nah, because I don't decorate. And that's what I love to learn from you, all these decoration pieces, because if I would put your salad in front of my family, people like my family are gonna be all crazy about it. It. Oh, absolutely. It makes a huge difference. And we get a lot of emails from people who tell us that once they started making chopped salads, and especially adding some fruit to them makes a really big difference. They're like, oh, now I can get my kids to eat salad. They love the chopped salads. And also people who are feeding like elderly parents or anyone who's had like dental work or anything done, they can eat the chopped salads where maybe they couldn't eat a, a regular green salad that isn't chopped. But not only is it easier to eat, but it's just so much more flavorful. Another fun one that I like to make is, um, and we're just ending berry season, but I like to make one with, the, I chop the salad and then I add strawberries cut up and blueberries cut up. And believe it or not, corn with that. It can be frozen corn or corn cut right off the cob goes in that. And then do the um, balsamic, um, the Napa Valley Naturals balsamic vinegar over the top of that. And that is a really popular um, salad. And if I make that and mix it up and put it out, like if we're having people over for a dinner or setting up a little bit of a buffet, everybody will come back for more of that salad. And they don't even realize that they're eating something healthy or that it's vegan of all things, you know? They just don't even think about it. But, um, but and just making the salads and getting in the habit of having them every day, you will start to crave them. There's a saying that we crave the foods that we habitually eat. And literally every day I start before lunchtime, as I'm getting hungry, I'm thinking, oh, I can't wait till I get to have my salad, you know, um, and who does that, you know, but when you make them really fun and delicious, and like you said, you can make them different every day. If you, if you want to, you can have it be a different flavor profile, like you can do um, more of an Italian and, you know, I like to chop up basil and parsley in the salad and add um, you can get sun-dried tomatoes without oil at Trader Joe's. And I like to add those in and make it more garlicky. And oh, there's just so many different things that you can do. But I hope you guys will try um, making salads. And if you've never tried to make a chopped salad, try making a chopped salad and see if it makes a big difference for you. And um, thank you so much for having me on. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's my breakfast time right now. It's almost 11 and I am absolutely so hungry and I <laughs> do have a chopped 
salad. And I just want to thank you so much for all your knowledge and your time and your willingness to share your knowledge and the beautiful salads that you have. And would you please let people know where they can find you? Uh, because yeah, I put, we put the links in the chat and everything, but people who will will be watching after that, they won't be, won't be able to see it. But if you can just give people an information where to find it, where to find the, your beautiful Holland bowls, um, because sure. I'm going to get one for sure. Okay, of course. So um, you can find me uh, on my blog at Nutmeg Notebook, right here, nutmegnotebook.com. And when you go to the blog, be sure to subscribe. There's a little box that will pop up that says subscribe and you just put your email in there and immediately our program will send you a link to some exclusive recipes for subscribers as well as some of our favorite recipes and you'll need to make sure that you look in your junk email folder or your spam folder since we won't be in your contacts you know that email um, usually ends up being in your spam folder the first time so check there and see if it's there. And there's a delicious curry ginger butternut squash soup, which is perfect to make this time of year because I was in the stores yesterday and the butternut squashes are, are on, a, uh, on sale for a good price right now. And that's one of my favorite soups ever. So that's where you can find me there. And then I'm on YouTube as Nutmeg Notebook. So you can just go to YouTube and in the little search box, put in Nutmeg Notebook. And I have over a hundred videos there. And I'm also on Instagram as Nutmeg Notebook and Facebook. And I encourage you to follow me either on Instagram or Facebook if you wanna see how I eat. Because like, you know, at 4.30 a.m. this morning, I was posting what I ate yesterday. And in that I either give you a good description of what the food uh, was, was um, made from, or I give you a link if there's a recipe to go to, to see what was um, involved in making what I show you. And that just seems, people seem to really enjoy that because they can see how I cook. And then every other Sunday, we do a live show on YouTube at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And this coming Sunday, we will be live. And so sometimes we have like a little lecture that I do. Other times we have a Q&A where we take questions that people have sent us and you can ask questions in real time in the chat. And um, so that's every other Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific time and 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern time and it's fun and we've created a really nice little community there people get to know each other in the chat and everybody introduces themselves and tells you know where they're watching from and it's just a lot of fun and also a good a good opportunity to ask questions and I can answer questions anything that's not medical of course because I'm not a medical um, professional and when you go to the blog um, you I tomorrow I'll put up um, a post all about Holland Bowl. But if you just Google Holland Bowl Nutmeg Notebook, all of my posts about it will show up. And we just interviewed him yesterday. So if you want to know more about the bowls, you can go to our YouTube channel. And yesterday's video was an interview with Holland Bowl. And you can learn all about the bowls. So thank you so much for inviting me to participate today. And I wish all of your um, students, very good luck with their whole food plant-based journey. Stick with it. It's so worth it.